Hello, I'm Dr Beth Colby, a psychiatrist in London. The Royal College of Psychiatrists published a consensus statement on the prescribing of high-dose antipsychotic medication in 2014 and any decision to prescribe a high dose of antipsychotics should be made in consideration with this. It is the overall responsibility of the consultant psychiatrist to prescribe high-dose antipsychotic medication but this should be discussed with the multidisciplinary team and the reasons for this should be clearly documented in the notes and the patient informed. But what is a high dose of an antipsychotic? Well there are two definitions of a high dose of an antipsychotic. One is if a patient is on one antipsychotic medication and the dose is more than 100% of the upper BNF limit. So for instance more than 20 milligram of Olanzapine would be a high dose. Or if a patient is on more than one antipsychotic drug, then you add the percentage of the upper BNF limit of both drugs. So for instance, if a patient is on drug A at 50% of the BNF limit and drug B 75% of the upper limit, then the total dose would be 125% of the BNF limit. And as it is over 100%, it will be classified as a high dose. In general, it's only a small percentage of patients who are on high dose antipsychotic medication, but the side effects can be serious and therefore monitoring is required. As a baseline, an ECG electrocardiogram should be performed and the QT interval measured. The urea and electrolytes, the renal bloods and the liver function tests should be done and a baseline temperature pulse and blood pressure should be taken. It is also good practice to have a baseline symptom rating scale performed and also side effect profile performed. Most trusts will have a high dose antipsychotic monitoring form and will have protocols for the ECG, UNE, LFTs, blood pressure, pulse and temperature to be done between every three and six months. It is important for patients subject to consent to treatment under the Mental Health Act that the fact that the patient is on a high dose should be recorded on their T2 or on their T3. What are the risk factors for patients on high dose antipsychotics? First of all, age. More elderly patients are more susceptible to QT changes. Hepatic impairment, renal impairment, cardiac history, obesity, this will affect the cardiovascular risk and also the hepatic function. And for people with a very low BMI, they may have electrolyte abnormalities. People who are heavy smokers increase the ischemic heart disease risk. And also it will affect hepatic metabolism of some antipsychotics. Some illicit substances will increase the QT interval. And women have a QT interval longer than men. And what are the normal QT intervals? Well, for men, it's normally less than 450 milliseconds and women less than 460 milliseconds. A borderline prolonged QT interval will be between 450 and 500 milliseconds in men and between 460 and 500 milliseconds in women. And a prolonged QT interval will be more than 500 milliseconds in both men and women. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been informative. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye for now.